Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Tony Dudzik, a.k.a. Pick Guardian. Mike Trombley, Red House Electronics. Jared Brandt. Brandon Wong Pickups. <laughs> are you selling trucks? What are they? <laughs> Everybody asks that. Man. Yeah. Hey, it's me, Todd Novak. Glad you're with us today. And we've got a special guest on the line. Go ahead. This is Tony from Pedal Genie. That's right. Tony from Pedal Genie calling from? I am in Deerfield Beach, Florida. Yes, over the beautiful thing called Skype. I mean, I don't know how beautiful it is, but it works. It works for us. Thanks, Skype, for making something that works Thanks. pretty reliably. Everyone, we are excited to be talking about guitars today and guitar gear. I know I am. It's a Friday, and I'm done with this week. Kaput. So let's talk about cool guitar stuff. Yeah. I've had a super busy week. I think you guys might have as well. Um, yep. And if you are listening to us right now, and that means you're hearing what we're about to say, <laughs> Tony has a, has a little message for you. I do. Well, yeah. Lean in there, buddy. I'm say leaning it. in. So here's the deal. If you, if you like what we're doing here on the Guitar Knobs, you can show your support by becoming a patron on Patreon.com. And apparently, for less than the cost he's, he's of a handful of it. picks or a big, big honking shredder style inch thick pick, Jeez. you can keep this podcast running. And for the cost of a couple of micro brews or a good meal yeah. at McDonald's, you can get one of our <laughs> super cool Guitar Knobs t shirts as well. Um, you can su- show or you can support our show, of course, at patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. And we really do appreciate sharing our experience and your continued support. Thank you. S- please be a patron. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Mike. You look like you have something to say. No, no nothing to say. <laughs> He's taken back. Okay, I'm, I'm listening. He wants to read that part. Um, yeah, so that was off the of paper. So there's our paper. <laughs> okay. Hey, everybody. Thanks for uh, being here. I already said that, so let's get going, right? right? Okay. Guitars and gear is awesome. Let's go. Mike, what happened in your world today? Uh, this week, <clears throat> I mean. All right, so um, it's going to throw you guys off a little bit, but uh, let's see. You know, get married. Yes. Oh, no. Shut no, up. No, shut up. No. I think you just shut met that mouth. girl. Yeah, shut your mouth. So anyways... A uh, couple last month, I went to uh, Montana, right? Yeah, yeah. Went to Montana last. Uh, yeah, it was the last month. Anyways, I didn't bring my gear, and I was requested to play. So you know, I'm like, oh man, I need some effects, blah blah, blah whatever. And um, my uncle's like, hey man, I got this thing. It's called the Boss ME50. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh snap, you know. So so I set it up, you know, added some. Says the pedal builder. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> no, but listen to this. So anyways, I set it up, blah blah, blah you know. And uh, here I, I come to get this really sweet uh, distortion on it. Like it. It just has your classic, like, uh, 80, I don't know, just the, just a classic distortion that so really cleans up good. I'm, what is this thing? Explain what this is real quick. So uh, it's the Boss ME50, which is it's a multi-effects processor. Oh, okay. But it doesn't have the amp or i think it actually has an amp head model simulation but yeah. it uh but it's more built for a it's a pedal it's okay. it's built as not like you know it doesn't have a cab simulator or right. anything like that so you just you go actually, up and down on the effects number that you could yeah do and presets you, just, you and all plug it things. straight into a right. uh, you plug it straight into a guitar amp right and uh wait is that the yeah, the boss ME. Actually, I have the twenty-five. That's what it is. It's half that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Less, less bells and whistles. I know less bells and whistles, but that's the way I'd pr- rather prefer it. Anyways, uh, I bought the, or I ended up uh, enjoying the distortion out of this thing yeah. so much that that's like, like a phrase where you substituted enjoying this expletive, but you said distortion. Oh yeah, I enjoyed the distortion yeah, exactly. out That's of this what it thing. Is. It's the uh, Boss ME25, right? And uh, here I ended up enjoying it, enjoying it so much that like I was like I ended up going and buying it. It was like a hundred bucks or something <laughs> like that. I know it's the stupidest purchase ever, but no, no, but I enjoy it. No, it's not. And the only thing I'm using, I, I'm not using the reverb. I'm not using the delay. I'm not using just for the, the distortion, right? Just for the distortion. <laughs> oh my gosh! But it also has the uh, 
the volume it's got a pedal. It has a volume pedal on it. Yeah. Sweet. So and then it also has a tuner. So I get those three. I mean, pedals. just even using it just for a tuner and a volume yeah. pedal. Three is out of the five hundred things. Right? Pretty yeah. good purchase. And I can still run it with uh, you know like some other overdrive pedals so that like you know I can add some little sustain to it. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, so I ended up purchasing purchasing this thing and I've been using it for the yeah, past couple of weeks. Huh. And yeah. so I thought I'd throw it out there, and it was, and it's it's weird because uh, originally when I first started guitar, I had a Boss GT10, and I really enjoyed the uh, distortion I was getting out of it, you know. And here I end up coming to play this thing, and I'm like, that is that distortion. Oh my nice. goodness, you know. And nice. Yeah. So right now it's on my board. And That's kind cool. Of, yeah, That's kind of fun. No, nah, like mix it up. That's kind of punk. Yeah. I, I, I played lead guitar in a band a while back um, in one of the bands I play, played in, and I had an effects processor only because we did so many different kinds of songs, yeah. top 40 stuff. I just, Need I didn't, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, who out in the crowd is going to tell if I'm using analog or digital? Yeah. Mm, so, Tony will. Well, yeah, and let's make it clear. Sorry, for the listeners, <laughs> uh, we, the have two, we have two Tonys <laughs> today. Um, <laughs> so we've got Tony Schreiber on the on the line from Pedal Genie, and we're gonna call him Tony because he's our guest. But awesome! The, Th- thanks for that. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. And the regular Tony, we're gonna call Jocko. <laughs> 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 no, we'll just call him. So his last name is spelled Dudzik, but yes. we're going to what is. I was corrected on his... Po- the proper pronunciation is Dujic. Dujic. Are okay. you serious? Is, is that Polish? That yes. is cool. Okay. 100%. Purebred. All right. Dujic. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me that a long time ago? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, Tony, uh, do you have much experience with the Boss 25, the SC25? Um, I do not. Um, one of my four on the floor, however, is going to be a boss multi-effects unit. Interesting. Nice. But not that one. Ooh, I, I'm going to correct peak. myself in it. That is the ME25. I just right. said I know that, you but you know. <laughs> right. So you're, you're entering, so that'll be the first multi-effects thing that you guys would have. Is that correct? True. The, uh, the one I'm referring to, I'm going to withhold it for a secret till we get to that segment but yes yeah we we don't uh we don't ship most multi-effects units because they're simply too big for our subscription package boxes i see that's smart sure oh, yeah. yes mike yes another mike has sweet, a question another sweet thing about this multi-effects this boss is yeah. i can run it on a nine volt power supply so i just run it with my voodoo labs uh pedal power it doesn't nice. have like a solar panel in the front like a little <laughs> calculator <laughs> right a crazy huge wall. No, those are the Digitech right. ones that require the uh, yeah. million yep. milliamps. Oh. Yeah. So, you, so you don't need any kind of adapter or anything. It's I just so run weird. it like a normal pedal. It's really yeah, tricky. that's really cool. Yeah. You got to bring that in. Yeah, I oh, will. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's hear from Tony from Pedal Genie. Uh, well, I bought some pedals, sold some pedals, shipped some pedals. Yeah. Uh, didn't have band practice. Frustrating. Uh, that's always isn't that a letdown when you, you that's <laughs> i look forward to that personally you know i know some not everybody does but i do so when it doesn't happen if somebody cancels it's like it's like oh man christmas is postponed a week come on i, well, I ever, pretty i pretty much feel that way yeah. you know i enjoy i enjoy band practice um i can't say anything of note in particular this week it was one like most others mm-hmm. um you know the the pedals may have changed but they came in and out as usual Cool. Business is good. Yep, yeah, still growing. Uh, we are approaching our fourth year in business. Okay. Um, you know, membership is uh, climbing steadily. Excellent. Not as not as steep as I would like, but definitely steady. So, why don't you tell? Why don't you, let's let's help that out right now and tell everybody just re- just briefly exactly what Pedal Genie is. We don't have to get into it deep because we're gonna. That's what the interview is gonna cover. But why don't you give us just an overview, real quick? For sure. Uh, Pedal Genie is basically Netflix for guitar pedals, at least the old DVD style kind, where you built a queue of the thing you wanted. Uh, we call it a wish list, and uh, we send you a pedal from your wish list. You play for it as long as you want, 
month, day, week, year. When you're done with it, you send it back. Uh, if you like it, you can keep it and buy it for a great price. Uh, but once you send it back, we send you another, and we do that ad infinitum until you're done. Nice. Uh, so we have uh, we just passed 2,000 pedals available from 135 manufacturers. Wow, that's that's a, that's a pretty big offering. To be able to have access to all of that is pretty amazing. I'm coming up on my second pedal. I have this the um, uh, the saucy overdrive. Coming. Way huge saucy box. Yeah, the way huge saucy. And last week I had the woodcutter, which was pretty wicked. So. Yeah, it's cool. It's kind of like, you know, I just get to go put in all the things that I that I want and they're going to be coming at me. Nice. So, yeah. Oh, that was Oh, that was you. I picked that out for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's cool. Keeping keeping it alive, keeping it going. Jared, what is going on? Big excitement for me. Um <clears throat> Sunday. <laughs> Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Nice. I was in uh, Michigan uh, for a family reunion. And but let's go back like six years, okay? I loaned. Wait, okay, hold on. No, no, no. You just gotta let okay, me. All right. Let me do it. So I loaned a cousin of mine six years ago uh, an Electra LPC, I think it is, or L MPC. MPC. It no, nah, it's it's looks it's like the a lower ball. model. It's not the neck through. It doesn't have the effects stuff. Yeah. I think it's a different. I think it's a different one than that. It's the well, anyway. It's a bolt-on neck, but it's black. It's like a copy of the Black Custom, uh, and it's. I think it's like a '77 through '80, '81 with the uh, kind of the wave headstock, and uh, I just, I just love that guitar. It's the first full-size guitar that I've ever that I've ever had. I got it in like Christmas in 1992 or 1991, I think, or maybe even 1990. I don't know. But uh, I loaned it to a cousin of mine, it, like a third, second cousin removed, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, this kid is a fantastic guitar player. You're welcome, Eel, uh, Ian. I even forgot his name, but uh, the kid is a great guitar player now. And uh, I, I loaned him this guitar, yep, so I could, uh, you know, watch him uh, grow and, mm -hmm. and see what he does with it. And he gave it back to me. He's like, hey, man, I don't use this anymore. It's been in the closet for a couple of years. He's like, I, I play strats. That's nah. basically what I play. Yes. Ooh, and, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I got my guitar back, and yeah. I've been – it's kind of been my go-to for the last three or four days, just plugging it in and just letting it rip instead of my, you know, 56 to 59 conversion or my, you know – USA made less paws or anything like that. This guitar, I like it. It's it's a little slimmer than the normal size Les Pauls. It still has some weight to it, but uh, I well, really like the way the neck it does plays. weigh a lot. This is a MPC, the one with the uh, built-in no, no. effects modules. No, the, it's the model. Well, on the truss rod cover, it says SLM. That's it. But that's for St. Louis Music. That's St. Louis Music imported those. Yeah, That's but, why we uh, have to, uh, Dudge, dude, I'm, the Dudzik. I'm just saying Dudzik. Dudzik. Forget it. I'm just saying Dudzik. 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 If you want to say it right. That's Dudzik. all I Yo, Dudzik. Okay. But, um, yeah, what's your uh, Tony? Yes. That's me. No, it that's is me. Sand it's <laughs> sandwiched. <laughs> that's, no, that's me. Raising hand. That's, that's me. Right. It is a two piece body. It's sandwiched. Yeah. I could see the split, you know, in the middle of the. I don't care what it's. I, no, it, it's cool. And, it and can you, be a loose sight. You I don't, it's you've, a, you've got uh, you put an early version of your pickups in in that. Is yeah, that right? I wound uh, one. That's when I was maybe two years in. Yeah. So I I took the original ones out and I I just rewound the bobbins because they're actually really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and the pickups are original to the guitar, but I did rewind them. So they sound great. You know, yeah. the pickups still sound great and. Uh, so Electra also made, I think Tony, what you were referring to were the the MPC models that had the little modules that you plopped into the cartridges, back. yeah, little cartridges. Correct. We, yes. we the we talked the about modular powered circuit. Ah, thus MPC. Yeah, yeah. We there, were, there's we, something you need to get onto get onto pedal. Yeah, duty. did people make? Can people <laughs> uh, like mod yeah. those and make after mod like after mod market mod model? What in places are you talking about? I can't talk. 
Um, not that I know of. No, there's enough of the original ones out there. Not really. There's some of the. I mean, everybody has like the distortion ones and the phaser. I think those were yeah. the the base ones. The other ones, the other ones people just don't care about that. Well, they're hard to find. Right. Some of the some of them are really hard to find. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we talked about a. We did a um, what you call that a pawn shop run. We got t- a couple pawn shops right by us. And I kind of fell in love with this bass. It was the uh, the Outlaw oh, yeah. X610. <laughs> so cool, man. <laughs> and it was 100% 1977. Yeah. Like, yeah, they like, came out with that. 70, 77, 79, something like that. Just wicked cool. Had a bunch of switches and stuff. It looked like something yeah. like maybe like, almost borderline ent whistly, but way tamed. It was just really cool. That was looking. a band that they were sponsoring. That is a weird looking band. instrument. It what, is. What was yeah. uh, what was the uh, what were they asking for that? Oh, uh, he was asking, I think, seven hundred dollars for it, and I was like, uh, he didn't even know if it worked. And I was uh, on reverb at the time. There was one for about seven hundred dollars that was in immaculate condition. I'm like, this is from a pawn shop. It doesn't. He doesn't even know if it works. Good luck getting those little module things to work, I suppose. Um, maybe Mike could do that, but um, I, you know, I, he's, he also asks above retail for, for <laughs> everything in there, so it's kind of crazy, but I really wanted that thing. Huh. Tony. Yes, sir. No, me. Not wrong, Tony. <laughs> Doggone it. This is going to be such a hassle. Stifle yourself. Uh I am in the middle of doing... Uh, some revamping on the social media side for Pick Guardian, along with my 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 nephew who is really helping things out a little bit. So it's it's pretty good. Um, it's coming a long way. We're trying some things on Facebook uh, and selling some items on Facebook, mm-hmm. which I hadn't done before. And uh, so I'm kind of curious to see how that will that will work. But that was that. That's been. It. I mean, in addition to obviously chopping up plastic and and doing that, and then jumping off that and and doing some more. Right. And uh, f- for reference, chopping up plastic for custom pick guards and accessories. Yes. Yes. You could say that. Jared has a question. Uh, he raised his hand. Yeah, I mean, not only Facebook but Instagram. Instagram, Facebook, yeah. uh, even Twitter. So yeah. So uh, we have a little bit of work to do. I have some some suggestions for you that'll, that that okay. I think can help out. All right. Um, I wanted to say something too that I forgot to say. Yeah, <clears throat> please do. During my uh, of the week reign of terror. Thing. Oh, so I got new T-shirts. Uh, they are black with uh, the white lettering and design. And my friend Todd here with his creativity talent, uh, kind of. Uh, redesigned it revamped it a little bit i think it looks great they look put his amazing. touch on it yeah, yeah. they yeah. i really like them com- compared to the other ones uh anyway they're they're great t-shirts we'll have a picture of it on the uh, guitar knob site but uh guitar knobs guys um and gals if you want to uh receive a free t-shirt uh order a set of pickups for my website um it must be a pickup uh, not like a little pickup cover or something small, but a set, a set, a of, set pickups. of pickups. You just mention the guitar knobs, and the first five that do that, I'll throw in a free T-shirt. At the at brandonwoundpickups.com. That's right, Jared at brandonwoundpickups.com is my email. If you have any questions about pickups, and brandonwoundpickups.com. There you go. Nice. Well done. All right, everybody's made the rounds. Now it's my turn, and I have in my little hands well my hands aren't little but the pedal is uh i have been looking for a tremolo i was actually gonna build one that i had a really good idea for uh it was mostly because it was the idea then i was like oh that should be a tremolo oh i guess i'll make that uh i'll make that but then i realized i'm i'm running out of board space as was noted in in our last episode, uh, and I saw something at, at the local music go round called the Trellicopter from Moore, and this has got really good reading uh, ratings out there. It's a little micro size pedal, and it has a depth knob and a bias knob, 
and a, and a speed knob, and it's a little tiny black pedal, and it works. It does tremolo. That is pretty you reliably. Can put that in your pocket, bro. You can. What's the bias do? The bias just is it's kind of like a little bit of a, a filter. I'm not a, a, an electronic technical expert, but I know it colors the signal. Okay. Like I should say that. So, okay. Tony, would you care to comment on that at all? I've gotten a little annoyed at some of the mini pedals with side jacks because yeah. once you jack them up, they take almost the same space as a regular width pedal with top jacks. Um, oh, yeah. But that particular, but that particular mower is a uh, is a good uh, is a good tremolo, good example of a tremolo. Yeah, yeah, I, for sure. I, I, I queued up some of my favorite tremolos while you were talking, but um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Mike makes a really nice tremolo from Red House. I but have one. It, yeah, Jared has one of those. I don't use tremolo enough, and that was kind of what I was fighting with. I was like, if I make one, or if I buy, a, you know, a well done tremolo, like like. Mike does or any of the other great builders out there I'm using a full size pedal space on my board for something that I use for like maybe two songs Mm -hmm. so I just I didn't want to do it and I got a I had credit at the store so I was like this is perfect I'll just do this nice yeah the uh mover whatever it's yeah what is uh they also make a octave they also make like an octave pedal Mm -hmm. that um I heard compares to the uh, electroharmonics, uh, Pog stuff. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, my friend actually. Uh, oh gosh, you'd have to pull it up, uh, but it's like I think it's purple. It's mm. a, but it's, it's a purple. They make a lot of. Pedals. But it has a, it has a, this um, sub octave, and then it has octave up. Right, so and it's so like up. a sub and up. And then it, yeah, then it, yeah, pretty much, pretty much a sub up, sub and up. But it has the uh, mover package, right? And uh, and it does the polyphonic, so you can do oh, chords cool. with it. Wow, so, awesome. this, hey, this like Trelicopter scenes of pretty good quality. It's it, yeah. I'm I'm happy with it so far. You know, it's good. And the thing is, it's not a, it's not a pedal that I had to sacrifice for. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, they're relatively. You can get them used pretty 20 bucks no no more more than that i mean it's like it was, like, it was about 50 bucks i think yeah. um 49 49.99 but yeah I, I dig it it's cool it works and if i end up using tremolo more or want it in different ways i know where to go to from from mike or other various builders like my, go to pedal genie to go <laughs> I, I would definitely check out yeah. a couple from yeah. that the, the only, only one I can think of that's smaller that would save you more space is the uh, Henretta Crimson. Oh, yeah, um, okay. But it's only smaller because it doesn't have any knobs, so mm-hmm. you set everything on the inside and then just turn it on and off when you want. So yeah. it's that's that's much- definitely one of those we have one song that uses it kind of thing. <laughs> uh, I do wish that this was – I almost wish that this was not a regular switch but actually a momentary switch. Because mm, that's kind of yeah. how I use it. That can be done. I sure. know Mike has one that's got a momentary and switch it's great. on it. But it also do I? It, what? Yeah, it does a million other things that I don't need it to do. So, anyways. Yeah. Oh, man. It's that time. Mm. One, two, one, two, three. Four on the floor. Okay, Tony. You're up. Four on the floor. Hit it. All right. Uh, well, my first is very easy. It came to mind immediately. And that is the Empress Compressor. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's almost always on on my board, and it's always on my board. Um, as you can guess, I kind of have a board that's very fluid, um, but the Empress is pretty much there all the time. Uh, I brought home quite a few compressors, uh, including the Origin Cali 76 Compact Deluxe and Compact Bass, which were probably my second choice. Uh, also the dark glass super symmetry, uh, and a couple other things, but the Empress won out. Um, it's got the most knobs, <laughs> always a plus. Um, but the two biggest features, well, three, uh, a super low noise, probably quieter than even the origin while having more gain on tap to lift when it needed to. It's got an LED display that shows you the input level, the signal being compressed, and they cross over in the middle with a different color. So it's really useful in trying to figure out, you know, uh, or to help you dial in the compression. Or at times when I'm really crushing it, I can see why. It also has a sidechain jack 
which I thought was fantastic. Um, the only thing that came close to that was the Cali 76 compact bass that has a built-in high-pass filter. But, oh, the, that's cool. but the side chain makes it really, really flexible. I put a uh, seven band EQ pedal in the side chain and I use that to crush the bottom end and leave the high end a little open. That, w- that way my kind of my bass fills at the end of a verse kind of pop out a little more than they would otherwise. Yeah, I was That's- just going to say is it might be worth mentioning that yeah, you're going to be going through pedals that uh, pertain to your bass because that's what you play. Correct. Right um, I would I would still keep the Empress, you know, the Empress isn't strictly a bass compressor, unlike right. the Dark Glass or even the compact bass from Origin. Um, but I would totally keep the the Empress uh, on my guitar board as well awesome. for for that for all the all the above name reasons. Cool. That's a great description, too. Thanks, man. Thanks. Well, you know, I'm one of those guys that kind of like, well, if I'm going to stick, I'm going to do my research. Yeah. <laughs> and well, that was pretty good much company. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. What do you got? All right, number two is my Jam Man Stereo XT Looper. Um, I had a really specific need for a looper that would also play one-shot samples. So in the sense, a looper that didn't loop, that just played once and stopped. In fact, for all the lo- all the uses of the looper that I do, looping is the least of them. So number one is playing one-shot samples uh, in my band. It's for things like intros to songs and some, you know, like vocal snippet in a breakdown or uh, some sound effects that we might use in the song here or there. But it's one of the few loopers that does one-shots. So uh, that was uh, one of the reasons. It sounds almost like a trigger. Yeah, it pretty much is. At least that's how I use it. Yeah, then uh, my second use for it is moving it to the front of my chain so I can play a lick in it and then just loop that back when I'm testing pedals, you know, when I'm dialing in a compression setting yeah. or trying to dial in a fuzz or something because, you know, trying to play and twiddle knobs can be frustrating. Yeah. I think it's uh, worth and, mentioning, you know, it, people out there who may be wondering, I, do I really need a looper? I don't know if I need a looper. I'm not playing coffee houses by myself where I'm trying to do seven things at one time, yada, yada, yada. But honestly, if you're just trying to dial in sound on your band or you're, you're experimenting with pedals, that is an excellent way to use a looper. Yeah, it was invaluable with the compressor because I'm trying to dial in a sound, but you know, uh, this way I could have a repeatable, repeatable dynamics that I was then adjusting the compressor mm-hmm. for. So, uh, extremely useful in that regard. Mm-hmm. Um, and then thirdly, I use it to, I keep a, a series of, uh, drum loops on there that I, that I practice against. So I, I do, I use my looper for everything except looping really. Wow. That's awesome. I'm, it's cool to hear how you're using pedals in, in ways that may or may not be intended, but at least are, are very interesting. Do you use the uh, memory card on it? Um, the storage on board, the Jam Man, is enough for me right now. Yeah. But yeah, I think it has a mini SD card in it if I needed more more space. But right now I'm only using a fraction of the 200 slots in the memory therein. Jeez. That's a whole lot of memory. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Uh, All right. So thirdly is a pedal that isn't on my board right now, but it remains one of my favorite distortions since I started playing with pedals, and that is the uh, Bogner Burnley. It's kind of a – it's not a high-gain distortion. It's, I guess, somewhere between a mid and a high-gain. It just has a great tone to it. It's clean, if I can say that about a distortion. It's very not noisy, and I guess that's the Neve Transformer Bogner magic. Um, and it just has a great kind of uh, warmth to it. I'm throwing out all the buzzwords that I can <laughs> think of, but they, we, that, that pedal just fits in those, uh, in, in that, it just fits those words. And I, I love the, um, there's a jewel, the light that illuminates has some varying intensity and in colors as you start to... Uh, throw a signal into it so it's nice to watch too when you're playing with it that's cool but it's a great sounding distortion i like when people take uh, a little bit of um creativity with the lights or just different types of lights like, uh, like daisytronics has uh is is kind of known for their um and actually i think petty john too known for their like the big jeweled lamps on them mm-hmm. yeah those are those are kind of cool just tweaking with stuff yeah 
like that. Like that from the people up top. What you got for number four? Number four uh, has become the centerpiece of my pedal board, uh, and that is the Boss MS3 multi effects switcher. Uh -huh. um, this is a unit with a, a built in uh, three loop looper switcher. Uh, as well as a myriad of multi-effects. Along with control outputs, expression inputs, and MIDI outs, I fell in love at first sight. As we were talking about the Boss Emmys earlier and uh, your love of the distortion uh, in that unit, the dirt effects in this box are awesome. And a lot of people think that's sacrilege, but whatever it sounds great my favorite thing to do right now is dial up a really nasty fuzz and use the expression pedal to fade the fuzz oh, in kind of as the nice. song progresses or you know from verse to chorus or something like that so i'm really really digging that um you said this is the, the ms3 ms3 yes okay so that's the yeah. one that is it looks like um it looks like a switcher station Yes. Previously, when we would see multi-effects pedals, they looked like they almost looked like toys. Funky. Yeah. If you can go it, back it, to the to the MEs of the Boss exactly. and the Digitech multis, they're plasticky. They're giant buttons. Yeah. They look like my first pedal board. Right. <laughs> but this looks like what pros who are touring have in the front of their pedal board. That I mean, that looks like a, a really wicked setup that is yeah. that is durable and well built and well thought out. It is um, the Boss ES5 and ES8, which are their dedicated looper switchers with MIDI, um, have done really well. And we had um, we had a meeting here with Boss um, not too long ago, and we were talking about the MS3. It had just come out, and I'm like, when are they coming? When are they coming? When are they coming? Because I wanted one. And their imp their reason for bringing it into existence was they wanted to make sure that they got boss onto as many pedal boards as possible. Even if people weren't using boss effects, they wanted a boss product on the board. And I've seen this MS3 kind of, you know, do that. Oh, here's my analog man, King of tone and my clone clone and my whatever drive pedal, but they're all looped into an MS3 now. Right. Uh, and that's really appealed to a lot of people. That's cool. like it has, like it has to me. So, uh, I mean, for reasons that we haven't quite covered yet, I kind of come from a uh, MIDI synth sampler background. So mm -hmm. anything that has MIDI in it, I'm automatically attracted to. I use the MIDI on the MS3 to save presets on my two source audio pedals. So I'm always kind of patching things and running things together. So I, I can't say enough good things about the MS3 right now. It does have some limitations, but I haven't really bumped into any of them personally it, it yet. Doesn't, it doesn't sound like it does. I mean, I'm looking at the list and it's, <laughs> you know, so it's got, uh, let's, let me just read what is the, the official description. Multi-effects processor and loop switcher for electric guitar and bass with 112 built-in effects, three external pedal loops, MIDI interface, tuner, noise suppressor, and global EQ. I mean, cripes. That's Sounds like an like RV. <laughs> on a uh, you, you, you forgot the expression or control extra foot switch inputs as well as the control outs for like amp switching or something else. That too. Holy mackerel. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it, wow. So those are, those are running about what, like 400 bucks, something like that? 399 399 99. Yeah, so, so um, as you mentioned, like with one of the control outs, I run a cable from the MS3 to my Jam Man uh, for, to the foot switch input, and I use the buttons on the MS3 to bank up and down patches on the Jam Man. Wow. Uh, and then I can use the expression pedal input that goes into the MS3 to control effects over MIDI um, attributes or um, uh, parameters on the source audio stuff, like you know filter sweeps or or whatever. Um, yeah, it's 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 the it was the missing link and gave me everything I needed. So now I have to build another pedal board with the stuff that I uh, took off. <laughs> it, it, interesting. I, I'm gonna sound like a complete doofus here, but you said it was a missing link, and I was like, well, it's actually it sounds like the most advanced being ever, <laughs> not, not the actual missing link, like <laughs> Neanderthal. Well, Anyways, the, I'm, in, the, I'm a the, moron. The, I'm sorry. The, the, the the missing link in the sense that it ties everything I wanted together. Yes. How about that? Exactly. Well, it certainly sounds like it does it. Cool, man. Those are that's that's quite a board. Holy moly. You are making that stuff work hard. 
especially for bass. That's really impressive. Yeah, I you know I admit I sometimes feel a little bit of I don't know. Uh, oh, here comes bass player with his giant pedal board, and <laughs> I'm like, what? Whatever, man. You know, it's my job. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> what, just out of curiosity, what do you have those attached to? Uh, they currently live on a custom pedal genie purple Voodoo Labs Dingbat Medium. Wow, that's a lot to say. It's a mouthful. Um, the dingbat boards from voodoo are pretty awesome we have a a a pedal genie purple one coming but i had the uh i had the demo of the prototype unit and i'm like why am i not using this so i started using this and i ran out of space on my pedal train junior when i got the ms3 everything just wasn't going to fit so right i had to bump up what do you like most about the the dingbat i like the spacing of the holes and the rails they seem to the slots seem to end up in the right place where i needed them most of the time the angle is pretty good there's enough space on the side uh, underneath i put like a patch panel in it so there's enough room for that the power supply mounting is built in basically um so that's useful it's a little heavier than i'd like but it's this pretty thick um aluminum so i can't complain yeah. too much it looks like even the smaller ones have room for mounting your power underneath, which is kind of nice. Correct. Yeah. And they come in a really nice bag, um, although I do have a, di- a dig against the bag in that it doesn't have an outer or even inner pocket, which oh, is so, you know, I, so I got to throw my power cable and instrument cable and stuff like underneath, but yeah. it's okay. You know, I can live with that. That's cool. What's, hey, what's your uh, main bass rig? My number one is a Fender Aerodyne jazz bass. Oh, yeah, those are nice. Um, I kind of wish I stumbled upon it earlier in my uh, adventures, but uh, but I love it. It's pretty much got everything I want. I love the jazz bass feel, but I would like a lighter instrument. And the Aerodyne is nice and thin-bodied, thin wings. It's 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 been my number. One. Plus, it's got uh, I love painted headstocks. It's it's, a, it's like a it's a small thing, oh, yeah. but I'm immediately attracted to an instrument with a painted headstock. You know, yeah. body color matching headstock. I'm all over that. So. Uh, Aerodyne, um, I am torn right now between using a Quilter Base Block 800. I also have a, a Mesa Subway 800, but kind of my my main uh, head is a uh, Bugera Veyron, which has all the things I need. Um, I'm not too much of an amp snob or anything like that. I really don't care. I've just been trying to figure out what, you know, uh, what what gets loud enough without distorting and gives me the features I need, like a direct out or the right. kind, some of the yeah. EQs that I like. Um, the Quilter has has really simple EQ, uh, like a contour and a deep, and they and they actually dial in exactly what I want, which is kind of cool. Um, but uh, the direct out is only post, so if I want to play if I want to play at night, I have to disconnect my cab. Um, whereas on the Veyron or the subway, the, uh, direct out is pre or post. So I don't have to do that. Nice, nice. <laughs> and my main cab is a, uh, uh, Galen Kruger Neo 212. You got some good gear there. It's a lot of amps. <laughs> well, you know, I don't necessarily have all of them at the same time and, you know, I have access to stuff and, you know, yeah, okay. uh, do stuff here and there and say, Oh, Hey, we just got these in the store. Let's, uh, let's try them out. <laughs> That's cool. How long have you been playing bass? Uh, I'm about two years in now. Really? I'm a, I'm a very newbie noob, yes. So you were, you were a guitar player before? I was a keyboard synth player before, before. Oh, wow. From, yeah, from my from my late teens, I always thought I was going to be, you know, Flock of Seagulls dude. Right. Um, <laughs> I was, yeah, um, like I said, MIDI, sampler, synths. My, my first band, my first project was inspired by Nine Inch Nails, heavily inspired by Nine Inch Nails. And I, you know, um, I still have my, in fact, I just resurrected it three, four months ago, um, my Insonic EPS 16 plus sampler where I wrote almost all that material. Wow. Cool. Like early, so, like head like a hole kind of stuff? It, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pretty Hate Machine was my, uh, was my muse. Um, so it was only four or five years ago when I started the uh, the 
There's a music store that I started to work with a friend of mine who had worked for before, who is now also my partner in Pedal Genie. His name is Shep. I started the store project with him and in the process going, well, time to get back into music. Let's play guitar. I racked up a few guitars uh, on my wall. The ones I still have that I that I love are a uh, Epiphone Wilshire Phantomatic. Mm. And I have a Fender Pawn Shop Supersonic in uh, sparkly silver. Um, Ooh, now you're talking my language. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I had the uh, I had the pickups, uh, uh, the push pull pots to uh, split coil um, when I wanted, so we modded that one up a little oh, bit. But yeah. I don't nice. play guitar too much. Um, but I did buy, I did get a, a, a Hughes and Kettner Tube Meister 18 um, for my guitar, and then I started to build a guitar pedal board, and you know dicking around on guitar for a while until I was at a concert for a band that I uh, used to love in college. Um, and I'll add that I was a, I was a DJ on the local college radio station. Holy was macro, a, man. You, you, yeah, been you're like unfolding. Yeah. All right, so, who, who's the band? Who's the band? So uh, the band was called Quit, and they were popular in the early 90s. It was like a pop punk band from Miami. And about two years ago, I was at a reunion show for that band. And at the reunion show, I ran into a couple guys that I knew in another band at the time who it turned out I had interviewed on my local show. Uh, that band was called The Rails. Jose from The Rails, we were talking, we're you know, catching up. I hadn't seen him in a long time. He was telling me about his current band and how they just lost their bass player. And now at this time, I did have a bass. I had a, a Schecter Stiletto. Um, I didn't really know anything about it um, at the time. And I actually regret selling it now because I started to acquire other instruments and I got rid of that one. But I do kind of miss it. It was the only neck through bass that I had. But I didn't even know that at the time. <laughs> anyway, um, I had a bass, and I'm like, you know what? I can play bass. Let's play. Let's do bass. And I and because uh, I wanted to join a band, I was really itching to to join a band. So, and boom, I was in the band as a bass player. Um, and that's been about a, a year now. That band is Phineas J. Whoopi. Um, wait, wait, one one more time. Phineas J. Whoopi, like the. Okay. Uh, the character from uh, the cartoon with the dog professor and the oh, little kid right, with glasses. Oh, right, right, got, right. Like I said, my pedal board is overkill for that band, <laughs> you know, but but it's my platform for research, so so I have to. Yeah. Yeah, so that's my history as a bass player. It does take uh, it does take a beer or two to get me singing. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll play all day long, but if I need to open my mouth, yeah, that takes that takes a little help. Um, yeah, I, I sing back up on some songs, but yeah, it does definitely take uh, some beverages nice. for that to happen. Well, I bet we don't need any beverages to get you to talk about Pedal Genie. No, no, that's that's any day, all day. All right, let's get into that, man. I, I'd love to know how you got into it. What was the you know the genesis and you know how how that whole thing kicked off. One of the big reasons that I wanted to talk to you was I think that the information that you have as somebody who's providing pedals from, I can't remember how many. 135. 135 brands. <laughs> 135 brands shipping all over the place. You certainly have the finger on the pulse of what people want, what people don't want anymore. I ask you about you know, what's going on in the world of pedals from that point of view as well. Okay. All right. Awesome. Cool. Hit uh, it. All right. So the genesis of Pedal Genie was, um, I started, uh, up a music store with Shep. Um, uh, that store is called Gear Hero HQ. And in the early days of that store, um, we knew we were going to do a lot of work online cause we kind of come from that background. One of the things I did as a software developer is make a multi-channel inventory management software so that you could sell on Amazon and eBay and website and all those things all at once, you know, sharing inventory, et cetera, et cetera. So we had had that experience together. We were getting into the musical instrument business. Um, we wanted something that was going to differentiate our store physically physically from other stuff in the area and especially online. And one of the things we started to do early on was to acquire pedal brands that weren't available elsewhere. For example, we are, and I think still we're the only, our Gear Hero HQ is the only Strymon uh, dealer in the state of Florida. So things like that really started to bring a focus to the, to the store. We're adding more pedals, we're adding more pedals. What year At is the this? Same, uh, this is four years ago, five years ago, okay. uh, when we started Gear Hero HQ. So at the same time, 
uh, Shep is looking around the store, and Shep is a uh, Shep is Shep is a, 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 a total music guy, but not a musician. But so he's looking at things like in the store, uh, business wise, and he's staring at the guitars on the wall, going, "I wish they were making me money instead of being here on the wall." And we started talking about rental business. And while we're talking about guitar rentals, uh, you you scale that up, and it gets to be a little problematic. They're expensive to ship. They're fragile. And there aren't so many that somebody would need to try or rent. You know, it's like I need a guitar for a gig and, and I don't or I need this particular car guitar and then I don't. Um, so as we started to think about pedals, they had everything that guitars didn't in that sense. They're relatively small. They're cheap to ship. They're made to be stepped on. So they're very uh, rugged. Um, and there are thousands of them. And we were essentially on the cusp of, you know, riding this wave of new boutique, uh, you know, pedals coming back, I guess, after a wave of, you know, digital or DSP processors and multi effects units and everything was coming back again to analog single pedal stuff. Um, So basically riding that wave and saying, hey, there are so many pedals out there. Why don't we do a rental business for pedals, but we'll do it subscription style because everybody loves recurring revenue. Um, and at the same time, doing it that way allows us to build a bigger invent, a bigger and broader inventory of pedals. If we did rentals s- traditional style, we would need you know a hundred copies of the same pedal that everybody wanted. Oh, yeah. uh, but instead, we can take those hundred copies and instead have ten copies of ten pedals instead of a hundred copies of one pedal, mm-hmm. for you know as a way to spread out the thing and add more and more selection. So we saw that as a great way to do that, and Pedal Genie was born. Nice. Well, it's a good thing you didn't try to do that during the the rack mount era, because that. Right. Was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, people people at, people want you know it's like why don't you have Amp Genie? And I'm like, well, because it would cost two hundred dollars to ship it <laughs> yeah. to you and back. Right. Uh, yeah. that's Can you imagine the the four twelves? I need a full stack. Yeah. Oh man. And Drum so we we started with uh, we started with a list of 300 pedals, and f- you know uh, three and a half years later we're at 2,000. That's nice. that's awesome. It's incredible. For those who haven't been to the site yet, where can they go right now to check that out? Pedalgenie.com. Pretty neat because it's all nice big pictures of pedals, and everybody yes. likes that. <laughs> yeah. So what? Um, I'm I'm assuming you have multiples of uh, the same pedals uh, as you're fulfilling the orders. Uh, for sure. The most, you know, the most common or the most wished for pedals are the ones that we have the most of. Um, and, you know, I'm not ashamed to admit out of some of those 2000s, I don't have any copies because nobody's ever asked for one. Yeah. You know, uh, there's, you know, the, the long, the, the very end of the long tail, there are some pedals there that nobody really cares about. So I've never actually had to get one. So we use the wish list. Uh, that our members create. What we do is we ask for a list of 10 pedals, at least 10. Mm-hmm. Plenty of plenty of members have 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 pedals on their wish list, but we want at least 10. That way, there's a group of 10 that we can odds work such that we have at least one of those available when it's time to ship that person the pedal. Cool. So that that breadth of selection, we use that wish wish list data to you know say okay this is the most commonly wished pedal so we're going to have more of those this pedal nobody wants anymore so we're going to sell it you know uh this one's uh, as you were alluding to earlier there are some trends and tides and things that we followed and uh some pedals follow a uh, kind of like a new release kind of uh schedule where they're really popular in the beginning and then it dies off and we have to sell off some units and things like that but yes we totally have more copies of the more popular pedals well, it's, it's cool, too, because you can when you go there and you start browsing, you're able to very easily search by brand. You could look at like Catalan Bread and there's like, well, OK, well, there's 11 pedals for me to choose from there. I, that's a good place to start. And then you can also search by type of pedal, which is cool. So it's fun just to go play around. And, and when I was asked at the very beginning, when I signed up, I said, um, put 10 pedals in your wish list like okay, I'll make a Christmas list. <laughs> and then as soon as that last one it's shipped, fun. I was like, oh, cool. I get to go put another one back in, you know? Right. And, then, and then, you know, you can uh, you can assign priorities to them. And that's the thing that I, I didn't know right off the bat with that I wish I did because I was really gunning for um, one, of, uh, one of two fuzz pedals that I was very interested in. And, and, I, and I thought that was going to arrive first because it was a... 
it was at the top of the list, but it wasn't. So as you're doing this, everybody, there's a little there's a little uh, uh, box in, to the right of your selection that you can put high, medium, or low in, and that helps Tony figure out okay, which one does he really want? Right. <laughs> now, what you've basically hit on is a really uh, this is a hot button issue for us. Um, so the good news is is that the next version of the website, which is currently being worked on right now, will have a drag and drop sortable wish list so mm. everybody's wish of why can't i order the pedals the way that i want will come true um but the same kind of leverage that the wish list creates for you also creates for us in the sense that that pedal that you want the most um that you want the most nobody else may want except one other guy, which means I have one copy and you're going to end up waiting for it until that one comes back, even though it's your number one. And I'm going to disappoint you until that, that happens again. Um, well, so I I think it's, it's safe to say though, uh, uh, sorry, I hate to interrupt you, but I want to point out that you had really good service right off the bat. Like the minute that, uh, so my first pedal, um, there was a, there was, I'm trying to remember what the issue was. There was, there was some issue and immediately I was, I got a note that just said, we're super sorry. This thing is coming at you as fast as it can. Um, and it was, I think it was like maybe a day behind what I was expecting. Um, <laughs> you know, and so, but I got a note right off the bat. So I, it, I think that based on the way that I've seen those service interactions come back, that's, mm-hmm. that's something that people are you know, somewhat forgiving of maybe not of Amazon, but certainly of somebody <laughs> like, you know, pedal genie. Yeah. No. Uh, it's really important to, uh, have a very quick response. And, and I, I find that helpful. And, and when I get a quick response from anybody, it's, it's like, Oh, they instantly answered and, and something's being done. So yeah. It's like forgiveness in the bank. Exactly. All right. All right. I like that. Um, I mean, we've, is is we've gotten pretty good reviews as far as uh, customer service goes. Uh, I've tried to make, you know, that a top issue because that's really where most of the word of mouth comes from. Um, people are really quick to talk bad about you. So I want to make sure that that exactly. doesn't have to be the case. But the point about the wish list that I was making is, is that there is kind of a, the interests of the customer do not necessarily align with the interest of the company when you want a pedal that I can't support adding another copy of because you're the only one that wants it mm-hmm. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So um, every day is a is a little bit of a juggling act where I go, okay, do I give this guy his first choice or do I give it to this guy or vice versa? Or, you know, I really, you know, I'd love to give you your first choice, but your second choice has been sitting here for six months, so I'm going to send you that one. <laughs> um, Things like that, you know, um, what you want is not necessarily what we want and vice versa. I want to move inventory around and, you know, get every pedal to everybody when, you know, a bunch of the same customers want the the same one pedal. Uh, but Which if I enough customers is probably harder with the more expensive, like the, the super expensive pedals. Um, yeah, you know, you, there, there is, uh, some capital expenditure you've got to kind of deal with when, um, your, your most are number one and number two of the most wish pedals. I'm sure that's something we're going to get to, but yep. they are the, the Strymon timeline and the Strymon big sky. <laughs> right. Um, and those are $450 pedals, you know, um, so you've got like 20 of those then we do have double digit copies of those pedals. <laughs> wow. So that's Holy a significant, moly. That's a significant investment, right? And yeah. for every for every big sky I buy for Pedal Genie, I could buy four other pedals. Um, yeah. So there's you know four of these, two of those, you know three of something else. Um, so yeah, it's it's a weighted uh, kind of measured fulcrum that I have to deal with every day. So Tony, uh, in the way that you are handling this, you mentioned you've got a new website coming to make all of our lives much more fun and much easier. Is there any kind of loyalty or um, good stuff like that coming at us? Uh, well, we, we love members that stay with us a long time. Uh, that's for certain. Um, the biggest thing you get is the longer you stay with Pedal Genie, the deeper the discount on the pedals that you buy. Um, mm-hmm. Because the formula that we use to calculate the price of a pedal that you've rented that you want to keep uh, – one of the biggest factors in that little black box formula is how long has this person been a member? Mm -hmm. Um, so that's a, that's a big 
loyalty bonus. The longer you stay, the cheaper your pedals get when you buy them. Uh, just today, I sent a big old box of gifts to, uh, I think he's our longest, our longest continuous member. Uh, and next month he will have been a member for three years. Wow. And that's a lot I of pedals. That's, that's, yeah, he's, he's gone through a lot of pedals, you know, and he's bought a fair amount of them, uh, in the process. Um, so yeah, we take that, that pretty seriously. Um, uh, so we love long time customers. Okay. Um, now, the other factor that does come into play, and I guess it's a little less subtle, it's certainly not something we publicize, but for any uh, given batch of pedals when we're processing the outgoing pedals for that day, the oldest members rise to the top. So mm -hmm. uh, they're essentially getting first choice of what's available as that, as that for that batch. That makes sense. Totally. So I, I had a – this question has been on my mind ever since I knew we were going to interview you. Right. Uh, you know how there's several different um, – Tube Screamer brands. What what is, what is the most uh, requested Tube Screamer version that you guys get? Uh, probably the uh, the Ibanez Hardwired, the T O the eight hundred eight Hardwired, or the, I'm not sorry, Hardwired, the Handwired, the eight hundred eight HW. So that's kind of like, I, and I'm not up with that's the, that's the four hundred dollar Tube Screamer that comes in an ammo case. That's what that uh, one is. Okay. Holy um, mackerel. People I've, just I don't want to know, know what it's like. That. You know, people yeah, just want to yeah. say, well, what's this compared to like the, you know, the regular $60, $70? One? I don't even know yeah. how much it costs anymore. But Well, so that, exactly. that's a good segue, Jared. Um, why don't we get into what this, what you've been noticing just as far as pulse goes in the, the pedal world? This is a, a one that just doesn't seem to stop growing, which I don't know of any guitar enthusiasts who are really upset about that um, <laughs> no, maybe, not at all. maybe the builders are i'm not really sure but um mike was like no nah, brah <laughs> <Stop, bra." laughs> <laughs> uh so why don't you I, i'm dying to know what are these these waves that you see walk us through some of that um all right i guess I, i've got i've queued up a few in my brain while we've been talking um one of them that isn't really related to the sound of pedals though is side jacks versus top jacks that mm really became like an issue for some people and um i've seen wampler's line has all been revised to be top jacks all earthquaker uh ver new versions and new pedals are all top jacks um even uh rocket pedals are all top jacks a lot of brands have just kind of gone that way and the funniest thing happened last week to me anyway was we had a review for one pedal and the guy actually complained that the jacks were on the side Wow. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't understand that. Not something so, that you can fix either. <laughs> right, right. So, um, and I guess with the, you know, with the proliferation of pedals and cramming more stuff onto a board and things like that, top jacks allow you to put the pedals more closer together and, and people really dig that. So that's kind of this physical trend that I've seen, especially when you see a brand revise their line um, to move the jacks to the top. So that's something that's been big. Well, it's while you're on that topic, I think it's really I'm interested to see if we start seeing that trend spill over into like mammoth electronics um, type of scenarios or, or other, you know, DIY kit builders where they start they start actually doing the pre-drilled holes on the top instead of mm -hmm. on the side. Um, that is that's something that I'm, on my last build with them, I was like, man, I really wish these are top mounted jacks, but OK, you know, mm -hmm. anyways, back to you. Um, all right. Um, recently, I guess programmable overdrives and digital analog hybrid distortion things, uh, have certainly gotten a lift. Um, source audio has some digital distortion pedals. Strymon came out with the highly anticipated sunset and uh, riverside. Uh, the chase audio bus brothers, um, has been super popular for us. So any kind of like pre-setable or at least programmable distortion. And I realize I'm lumping those all together when they're not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. The brothers is a analog distortion with a, you know, DSP control set. The Strymons are analog preamps with digital distortion and DSP control. Um, the source audios are all digital um but to my ears they all have their uses sound great extremely flexible 
I love the Strymon Riverside, its ability to blend from one set of parameters to the other with a expression pedal. You can go from like a light chimey overdrive to a really heavy gain distortion with your pedal. I I I love the idea of doing that and that works out great. And I even have a uh I have the Source Audio Aftershock uh on my pedal board and I get a some great gnarly fuzz out of that that I really dig. So that's been that's been a big thing and I guess it's a way to kind of breathe life into overdrive and distortion. Uh, because the last thing that I want to see when I'm like, oh, let's add this new brand to our selection, it's, oh, look, they got four overdrives. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Do you, so, would you lump, would you lump like, um, dip, dip switch access into that group? Um, sort of, you know, I mean the, you know, Chase Bliss is kind of known for their little panel there. Mm-hmm. Um, and a, a lot of people get, get. A lot of, I guess, knob phobic kind of people go, oh, my God, that's too much stuff. But it's really just parameters for, you know, some of the stuff that's already on the pedal. You know, what does the expression uh, input do? That's what you half the banks right. of the, the dip switches are for. But I anything that gives you more flexibility, I, uh, I am a fan of. Um, uh-huh. Sometimes you're trading flexibility for usability uh, in some people's eyes, but you can always simplify it overall. So... By having those dip switches be on the back, you know, they're not front and center. Not to say that Chase Bliss pedals aren't simple to begin with. I mean, they've got, you know, six knobs and right. t- three switches and two buttons already. So Yeah. Well, I mean, I, one of one of the pedals that I'm anticipating receiving from you is the Hungry Robot FZ, which has the that uh, dip switch access to, which is, it's, it's so, you know, it's cool because it keeps, it keeps the box small, but right. you also can, like, completely switch the color on, on what that is. It's while you're talking about having ultimate flexibility, I just want to slide this in real quick. One of the things that I think at least, I I don't know if it's just because it's me or if a lot of people do this too, but I like having things, some things that have tons of flexibility. And then I also like having one or two things. It's like, this is just a hammer. (laughs) <laughs> like you know uh off, huh? yeah there's a there's a pedal or there's a pedal company called farm pedals and they've got this one called a sweet leaf and it's just it's it's just you you click it and it's just a wicked 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 fuzz and and that's all and you can't control anything on it it's just like <laughs> and it's like there's um it's almost like a it's like a knife you know just like it does one thing and it's and it's kind of cool and powerful that way do you see that at all? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, for for you know the the opposite, the, a knob phobic person kind of likes those pedals in the you know in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there there are things uh, exactly like that. Um, for me, we have some pedals from Beatronics. Um, they have a um, octahive and a walk to hell, which is a, lo- a low octave fuzz and a high octave fuzz. I think I got them backwards. Anyway, I. Uh, I love those, you know, they're, they don't do much else, but that, and cool they just, look at they too. crush it. Oh man. Yeah. There's some and of the we best have looking a, boxes out there. We have them in pedal genie purple and blue and green. So I'm pretty proud of that. But, <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so yeah, there's, t- you know, there's totally that. And there's, you know, one of the perennial favorites is still, you know, full tone OCD, for example, that's not, doesn't have a ton of knobs. Um, it's not a one trick pony either, but it's a relatively simple pedal that's still, still really popular. Right. It is with, it is within the top 20 of, uh, our, our wish list pedals still. Um, what's you know, your, what's and, your and number one all time? I pulled up the year to date all time. Cause you know, wish list changes sure. over time and whatnot. Um, but the number one right now is the Strymon timeline, which is the first time I've seen it overtake the big sky, but really only by a couple, you know, they're only a single digit apart in terms of the number of wish lists. Big Sky is number two right now. And that makes that it makes a lot of sense for us because a four hundred and fifty dollar pedal is really something you want to try out before sure. you commit to it. Sure. So it's kind of the basis on which Pedal Genie is built. And as I look at the rest of the top ten, they are all uh three four five hundred dollar pedals so here they are in order from 10th to 10th to number one uh the earthquake earthquaker avalanche run which i'm surprised to see get so high right now uh not that it's a bad pedal i'm I'm just surprised uh the chase audio brothers at number nine the hologram dream sequence at number eight the empress reverb at seven 
the Eventide H9 at 6, the Empress Echo System at 5, the Chase Bliss Tonal Recall at 4, and the Hologram Infinite Jets at 2, uh, and then, of course, the Big Sky in the Timeline. So though there's a couple pedals in there that uh, are another trend that I've seen recently, and this is probably the result of, well, there's only so many effects, we need to do something new. Um, so the Infinite Jets and the Dream Sequence, um, as well as a little further down the list, things like the Montreal Assembly Count to Five, this kind of uh, glitch, stutter, arpeggiator, slicer kind of thing gotten pretty popular. People dig those. So I'm happy to see that too, because <clears throat> anything that gets into you know, unique sounds, anything that gets in kind of electronic music land, I kind of dig as well. Right. Other perennial favorites, the Pog 2 is way up there. It's still a big popular one. There's, so there's a lot of octave things kind of uh, in that sense. But the other EH is that I see a lot of activity on are the um, the 9s, the Mel 9, the Synth 9, the B9, the C9. Mm -hmm. And um, someday soon, if Electromonix is true to its form, there'll be a big box, you know, the Max 9 or the All 9 or the 999 <laughs> or something. But But to... <laughs> The um, to tell you the truth, the uh, uh, I'm not a huge fan of the Mel 9 except except for the uh, there's a choir patch uh, on the Mel 9 that's really sounds that sounds very cool. But the sounds that come out of the Synth 9 are amazing. So that's something you should get your hands on if that appeals to you at all. The Synth 9 is really very cool. Are are we seeing fuzzes slow down at all? Um, maybe. Um, I can't say that there are any fuzzes here in the top. If, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at this list, and I think I got to go down into the – oh, the Muffaletta clocks in somewhere around 29. Mm. I love fuzz, but I know a lot of – like a lot of the guys in my store or whatnot, they're like, no, I hate fuzz. I don't use fuzz. I hate fuzz. I'm like, God, I love fuzz. If it's spitty and – yeah, I love fuzz. And it's not fuzz unless you can pick up a radio station. <laughs> um, so – yeah. I, I, now, not to say that there aren't new fuzz pedals. The uh, who is uh, Petty John came out with a fuzz, the Fuse. Um, yes, that's F -U -Z -E. done pretty well, and that's you know that's um, I think that's that's somewhat out of character. Uh -huh. You know, maybe it's it's a very tameable fuzz, um, and we've got some you know really really uh, common commonly rented fuzzes like the Zvex Fuzz Factory, uh, the Wampler Velvet Fuzz. Those Favorites. are probably the two biggest I can think of right now. And, and then the Muffaletta that tries to be all fuzzes to all people. Right. Um, you know? Hey, can I hijack? I'm going to hijack this really quick because we're, since we're talking about lists. I'm going to share my list. <laughs> Should we do that? All right. Sure. Okay. Not nest I'm going to read my high priorities first. No, I'm just going to read down the list. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Hungry Robot FZ. Okay. The, the TC Electronic Shaker Mini Vibrato. I think you're the only one who wants that pedal right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead. Well, hey, okay, to back that up, to back that up, <laughs> I, I saw a, a, a killer demo of it, and I was like, oh, man, because I really like Vibe, and I'm just waiting for a good Vibe to come out um, that, I, well, that I'm any, digging. Any of the TCs with tone print, they've got that whole versatility thing going for them, so I can't Absolutely. knock it for that. Yeah, and it's tiny, and I kind of like that. Um, the TC Electronic Viscous Vibe. Okay. And the JHS Morning Glory version 4. And to be honest, the only reason that I want to check that out is because it's on Billy Duffy's board. And I like <laughs> Billy Duffy. Uh, see, so there still is influencers influence from guitar players. What, out there. what if each knob is on like the very first setting? It's all number one and it's barely there. That's okay. If I can I, I can find that sound. I know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, then we have the TC Electronic Sub and Up Octaver. The Yellow Cake Furry Burrito. Oh yeah. The Walrus Audio Julia Analog Chorus Vibrato. So that's three vibes I've got on my wish list. I mean, still looking for that one. Um, the Earthquaker Depths Vibe Machine. Oh, that's four. <laughs> and then the fuzz one I'm vibe, super, super excited vibe. about is uh, the Death by Audio Supersonic Fuzz Gun. Ooh, that's a cool pedal. Ooh, fuzz oh, I just, I just sent one of those to somebody else today. Yeah. So. <laughs> Dang. What kind of, what kind of fuzz tone are you looking for, Todd? I'm, I like. What are you? I like a range. It, see, that's the thing. What I've had uh, several fuzz puddles, yeah. fuzz puddles in the in the past. <laughs> uh, 
and I like I want one that I can get sort of like I can switch the type of fuzz I'm getting, not just like the tone mm -hmm. and um, fuzz gun. And I think the apocalypse from Death by Audio, Death by Audio makes some wicked good fuzz. So you just want different yeah. flavors. I want to be able to go like I want a real splatty right now or splatty. Splatty, my, yeah. yeah. Or you know <laughs> I I want I want it I want tight fuzz. I want mm -hmm. loose fuzz. Yeah. Although I, li I like fuzz, man. So the, yeah. my two recommendations there are, you know, uh, the muffaletta gives you all kinds of fuzz. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it gets into the extremes uh, that some people would like. So my second recommendation is the Old Blood Noise Haunt Fuzz, yes. which goes from wicked fuzz factory territory to uh, much tamer, uh, warmer stuff yeah. as well. I think it's interesting, just since we're talking about fuzz real quick, is that when you see... Uh, one of the things that kind of convinced me about both the Hungry Robot and the Death by Audio is that they didn't go, cool, here's a fuzz pedal, and here's some Black Sabbath. Mm -hmm. You know, th they were more experimental. The, the, re the reviews, the demos that I saw were using it in ways that I'm not playing Doom Rock, and I'm not playing um, Desert, you know, Desert core, you know, Desert <laughs> you know? Core. Desert core. like, you know, like old Caius and stuff <laughs> like that, you know, um, I, I want to use it in, in, yeah. in more modern experimental ways. And that's kind of why I was looking for like something that gives me a little bit more, um, a, 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 a variation of that wave essentially, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Different yeah. My flavors. first, my first experiment with fuzz was, um, not intentional. I, <laughs> when I was like, I was 10 mean? or 12 years old, <laughs> you always laugh. Yeah, I, I, guess I always have funny segues into my thoughts. <laughs> and, and I I enjoy making you laugh before I even get the whole thing up. <laughs> was with my dad's JVC tape deck. I, 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 I didn't have any money. I couldn't buy guitar effects, you know, so I would. And I wanted to record something, so I plugged my electric guitar into that JVC tape deck. <laughs> And then I ran the output to the the PA, and and you turn the gate or you turn the input level all the way up, and you get you get this fuzz, man. It's that's the first fuzz I ever got. That was that's like hilarious. The only distortion that I had for many years because I, you know, I didn't have a job. I was 11, 12 years old. You know? <laughs> How yeah. crazy! No, it does yeah. it does sound beautiful though. Uh, the designer for my guitar pedals, he. Uh, one day, you know, we were sitting down there. This is when we were working on the heat wave. He was like, dude, I found the perfect sound that you need to put with the heat wave. And I was like, what? And so he brings over his tape recorder. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> did it. Yep. And then this guy just comes up. I mean, he just comes up with crazy, stupid ideas, you know. But they're, they're <laughs> oh, really thanks. awesome. No, they're really awesome ideas. Anyways, <laughs> he plugs us in. He was like, dude, check this out. He was trying to make a tape delay. Like he was trying to do a tape delay kind uh -huh. of thing. And then it ends up plugging, you know, like you were saying. Right, you in plug the, it in one of the mic jack. There's a left and right mic thing. Yeah, and the gain, and it just sounded really sweet, though. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's had really nice, like a really nice fine dirt sound to it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm on your side, Jared. Well. <laughs> I got your back. Yeah, the, uh, if I remember correctly, I've watched a lot of Rolling Stones documentaries, but I think it was uh, I Can't Get No Satisfaction. That was originally done by running his guitar through, you know, a, a, an early, early tape recorder. Yeah, I heard that before. Yeah. Yeah. So. Ah, I thought it was a broken speaker. Oh, uh, that was the kinks. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Cutting the razor slices in the in the speakers. Yeah. yeah. They're probably expensive, you know, pre-Rolas now that are <laughs> you know, worth 500 yeah. bucks. Garbage. Well, cool, man. Golly, I love talking about pedals and junk. Woo. We've been talking about it for a long time. Let's get time. to the would you rather section. Would you rather? Jared, what do you got? Okay, guys. Would you rather? It's very simple. Would you rather have on your guitar or bass? Would you rather have the side jack on the side of the body? Or would you rather have the front jack on the front of the body, the face of the body of the guitar? Okay. That's an interesting one. Okay, uh, Mike. Mike. Jump uh, in there. For me, I think it it really depends on. Oh uh, no, it's no, not. It depends. Just, no. <laughs> what kind of uh, guitar cable am I using? Oh, you know, oh, right you know angle saying? or straight uh, plug? Yeah. Yes, uh, you always I'm, use the right angle. Period. 
Uh, not if you have a strat. Yeah, well, that's another yeah. problem. Uh, don't you? Yeah. Let's take some back you up for that one. Some back information for you, Tony. I'm literally the only like strat lover in here. No, I love them too. So, I, I love so them too. I, I got beef. a bunch of them. Yeah. Um, well, if I'm using a, a 90 degree angle uh, instrument cable, right? I would. I mean, I like the front. I have no wow. issue. I have no issue. I have. I have the uh, Fender. Uh, Duosonic, mm-hmm. which is has for the past four, I mean, past eight months, I've been using it every single week. Uh, and I, I enjoy the front. Yeah. I mean, I can manage the cable, you know, mm-hmm. if I have to unplug it, plug it. You know, I don't have to do that thing where you kind of like have to search. <laughs> yeah. The whole search thing. Yeah. yeah. You, you mean your guitar tech doesn't do that for you? Uh, <laughs> I mean, after I fired him, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Dudzik, what do you got? Now, speaking as a pick guard maker, uh-huh. ah. I love front, front mount jacks. Yes. Okay. Because half of the guards that I have to make are because someone stepped on a cable with a non right angle jack uh-huh. and busted out the that that right. section of the pick guard. Easy yeah. business. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, my personal preference, I mean, I, I, I could go either way. I, I think if as long as you have a right angle jack on the on the end of your cable, either way is fine. It's a it's you know a clean look, uh, especially if it's on the side of the instrument. So I'm gonna go with the side mm-hmm. because just because of the look. Um but uh, I'll go with the top just for business. Wait, okay. so which one is that? <laughs> He's going with the top, man. He's got to feed his family. All right, fine. Uh, Jared, what do you got? Okay, so uh, my favorite guitar is is probably the Gibson SG. And No, it is the Gibson SG. You it, got it six is. of them. Uh, I know. And I have old vintage ones Including that are, you bases. know, and newer ones and cool ones and blah, blah, blah. However, I think the very, in my personal opinion, the side jack is, I think, the most sturdy and the best uh, in the, you know, as far as uh, a utility and playing out. Uh, because if, if you have, like, take the SG, for instance, um, and it doesn't matter what uh, a right angle or a straight, if, if that SG is a, on a guitar stand, or it's not in a case, and that cord is left in that uh, jack. If you trip over that cord, you can bust the whole face of that of that SG. Um, so it's kind of you got to be real careful with front end, like with the pick guard deal. So uh, yeah, side side jacks are the most sturdy in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go with the side. All right, Tony. Uh, I am solidly side jack. Pro, although as I mentioned, my number one has a Strat style jack on the front. Mm-hmm. So, you but I totally prefer a side jack a uh, <laughs> for all the all the reasons uh, aforementioned. Uh, you know, aesthetically, you know, it's out of the way. It's easy to wrap around your strap and stuff like that. So, but yeah, side jack for me. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm side jack too because the stra- the the guitar cable must go in through the strap loop and. That's that's the end of story. There is no other alternative. <laughs> that's the way you do it. Hey, I like strats. I love Stratocasters as well, buddy. I just yeah. want to give some strats some stra- <laughs> strats love to you. Blah, 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 blah. Strat love. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Can't talk. Okay, everybody. It is late. We are getting hangry. We got to go get some Mikey's pizza. Late Night Slice Pizza. No money for that. Yes. That we just like it. We love Mikey's. And Thanks, Mikey. I want to give a humongous thank you to Tony for joining us on this episode. It was super fun talking about one of my favorite things in the whole wide world, pedals. And everybody out there, t- uh, Tony, why don't you tell them one more time where to go? Uh, pedalgenie.com. Pedalgenie.com. And exactly like it sounds. So what we're doing for uh, listeners of your show is we have added a coupon code for the purchase of used pedals that are on our site. 
A uh, few words about the used pedals. Um, while they are used, we do include the original box and anything that came with it because we don't send that out on rental. So you're getting that all pristine. They've all been checked to be functional because we don't rent unfunctional pedals. Um, and they're all obviously a tremendous value already as they're priced on the site. But the coupon code guitar knobs uh, gives you an additional 12% off of the already low u- pr- used price that's there on the site. Woo-hoo. That's awesome. I nice. like that. Nice. Can I use that code? You certainly can. Okay. <laughs> Don't tell my wife that. Um, yeah. Cool, man. And I chose, I chose 12% because uh, 10% is lame, so it just needed to be more than that. I like that. More than, more than 10 is good. Is, like that, that. is that guitar knobs one word or two words? Uh, guitar knobs one word. Guitar no spaces. knobs one word, no spaces. And go get yourself some pedals, everybody. Uh, so yes, Tony, thank you so much for taking the time. It was super fun. We'd love to talk to you again and maybe check in, uh, at a later date and find out what is trending again in pedals and see where things are going. For uh, sure. I'm going to, I'm probably going to put a blog out, uh, a blog post out featuring that list. Um, so that, you know, anybody that caught this and maybe forgot about what, what's, what's going on just as far as trending i think that'd be kind of interesting to see so i think i'll probably do that for everybody all right cool. as well as your four on the floor so if anybody hasn't been seeing the four on the floor blogs make sure you go to the the website theguitarknobs.com or look for us in the social feeds in which we feature the four on the four four on the floor blog mm-hmm. that's a mouthful for me mm-hmm. to say mm-hmm. and we're gonna we're gonna give links to where you can get those pedals as well uh it's worth mentioning uh, tony um were are any of those that you mentioned available on your site the four on the floor pedals of mine uh are all available from pedal gd excellent that worked out great so i didn't have to edit that (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so uh, we get we just have a, a couple more thank yous real quick. I want to say a big humongous thank you to David Wolfson who just joined our Patreon executive producers team as thank you, David. well. Nice. Yay. Thank you. As well as Martin Cliff and Tom Barazin. Thank you guys so much, and uh, we want to extend that opportunity to everybody else out there if you would like to become an executive producer head on over to patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs to find out how and with that i bid you all a very good subscribe yeah the first five the first five the first five I'll have orders a that reference just say just say the guitar knobs i will put a code on my website yeah, or you could just have them say the guitar knobs. Yeah. 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 Book Tony. Um, Tony here. Uh, Damn it. I, I've got new. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've, hang I've on. Got new. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're, we're really not this roll. terrible. <laughs> well, that's it for these knobs. Please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs visit our website at the guitar knobs.com for all of our past episodes four on the floor blog and other good stuff you can connect with us on social too at our facebook page and share your gear and stories on our facebook group also be sure to check out our instagram at guitar knobs catch you next time